Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's now time for uh, Off the Press. It's our segment where we have a quick review of uh, stories making headlines across the country uh, this morning. And of course, uh, we'll say welcome once again to Libra Soshoma, who is going to be doing a quick analysis of these stories uh, in the time that we have. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, welcome again to the studio. Uh, we'll take the Daily Sun first. Uh, the big one on the Daily Sun is FSAS RIP. I, I'm sure most Nigerians know what that means, but if, in case you don't, it simply means rest in peace. Uh, there are loads of details on page 6, 14, and 15. Uh, two riders through it. IGP scraps federal anti robbery squad as protests spread. UK Songwolu, Kalu, CPs, others hail decision. And then the sad one in the midst of all of this is the seven dead scores injured in Lagos building collapse. Uh, uh, at uh, the time um, I came into the studio, I saw that story. Uh, there is no actual um, confirmation as to the reason uh, for the collapse of the building. We know uh, some of the persons are in the hospital at the moment. Uh, WTO DG, South Africa's president, seeks global support for Okonjo Iwiala. That's very, Nigeria's very own. Uh, details on page 25 of the story. Uh, we have uh, more for you on the Daily Sun newspaper. Uh, we have this one that says, says uh, 144 killed in Jigawa flood. Village head, 12 others murdered in fresh attacks in Kaduna. FG presses ahead with water resources bill, insists criticism political. A 2021 budget presidency to spend 4.8 billion naira on electrical mechanical installation. Uh, there's a rider to that story for you. And then uh, straight to 2023, ex-minister Kema Chikwe makes case for Southeast presidency. Um, these debts, uh, flawed and building collapse, uh, Mr. Shoma, I want you to uh, start with that before we yeah, go on. Yeah, um, one liner each for some or most of these um, headlines um, because of time. Uh, let me start from the very top. South African President seeks global support. Um, I wonder why this is not coming from the Nigerian president. But anyway, that's a question for them. Um, dead, uh, seven dead in Lagos building collapse. I think that um, the, the rate at which buildings are collapsing you know, not just in Lagos, but across the country, it's one too many. Some people have alluded to shabby jobs by, you know, builders. But um, why the government is taking steps to ensure that this is corrected, but something also needs to be done about some, most of these old buildings, especially in a Lagos island, a Butemeta and all of that. Then, um, uh, Kema Chikwe seek a uh, make case for Igbo president, the Southeast president. I agree that, yes, it should be equitable. It should go around then. But subsequently, we should look beyond this, you know, turn-by-turn -turn presidency because it has, it has really not helped us. 144 kid in Jigawa floods. Yet, you know, underneath, you hear that uh, the federal government is still pushing for the water resource bill. Now, flood has taken over, you know, not just the north, even in my community, my village, Anegbeta, is taken over completely by fraud. You know, and other smaller villages around Uduchi and the rest. I, 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 did a, I, I posted a video of that. And yet, no answer from either the state government or the federal government. And yet, you're pushing for water resource bill to control the waters. Like I said here last time, you know, any river that flows between two states, the federal government wants to control those rivers and the banks. And you have not been able to manage even the crisis that you have at hand. Yet, you have 4% ecological fund you know, that you, 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 you say you have kept for ecology. So where is that 4%? And to tell you that it's all connected, the presidency is spending $4.8 on electrical and mechanical installation, and then they will eat with 380.8 million naira. You know, and so when people hear about this bogus amount, in a house that is occupied by just a few persons, you're spending all of this money to install, uh, do a, a mechanical and electrical installation, and then you eat with 300 and something million, when you cannot pay your civil servants more than 30,000 a month, in some cases they don't even earn it, and yet your fuel price has increased, how do you now expect the people to truly believe that you care for them? 
Pretty interesting. And uh, of course, uh, you already shared um, your thoughts extensively on uh, the uh, uh, SARS. And, yeah, uh, for me, I just want to, I, I saw rest in peace. The question would be, you know, time will tell if it is RIP. Now that I, I, I leave it there. All right. We're going to go straight to the uh, Nigerian Tribune. And I also quickly share some of the stories we have over there. Of course, uh, some of uh, the lead stories are on the uh, SARS. IGP dissolve, uh, dissolve SARS reps to proceed uh, with uh, police reforms. NHRC, Bakare demand prosecution of criminal elements. Uh, reps to meet with NBA, NHRC and CSOs this week. Uh, Magboma shop boils again. Two feared uh, shot. Uh, the, of course, uh, uh, the traditional ruler's palace over there vandalized. Minister rescued. Mother of uh, Ishak Jimo recounts her son's last moments. Nigeria to maintain Buhari and Oshimbajo with 12.2 billion naira in 2021. 3.2 billion goes to trips, 296 million on foodstuffs. Six dead and eight injured in another Lagos building collapse. Um, a few others on the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, with uh, 292,830 votes, Dulu defeats Jagede again. Victory or, uh, is a record of hard work, says governor. Uh, President, President Buhari and others congratulate him. Bandits killed 12 in Kaduna uh, community. These are the lead stories on the Nigerian Tribune. Back to Libra Soshoma. Yeah, um, bandit killed 12 in the Kaduna community. I, I wonder when you know, um, these killings will stop. And yet you have a governor in the state who is the chief security officer but has no police under his control. And, and so this brings us back to the issue of proper state. policing, you know. Not just state police, proper policing. Why police are killing innocent citizens and searching uh, pockets and phones, you have bandits raining havoc on communities in the middle bed, in, you know, the south, in the north, in the east, everywhere. And so, is it not high time we sit down and use this opportunity of NSAS to address the proper policing structure in Nigeria? Or are we so insensitive now that debts no longer mean anything to us? Anyway, we are, we are already in that uh, uh, situation now where even those who should be protecting you are the ones killing you. And then, um, in spite of that, uh, quickly, um, Akere, Dolu's, Akere Dolu's victory had been drowned by all of this. Um, I don't, I don't blame, you know, the, that. I don't blame him on that because it's been drowned on all of the, you know, mishappenings in in Nigeria. Not just, you know, I, I said it last week. You open up the newspapers. You want to, unlike those days, you you sit down, refresh. The newspaper should be refreshed, but now yes. it is one sad news after the other. But. If you look at the election generally, Akari Dulu from the northern part, you know, and then um, the south, the southern parts are waiting for their turn. Why the um, uh, the PDP candidates is from the central. So bringing a candidate from the central, you know, who had the governor before now, and so if for, for 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 the central that are waiting, uh, the, north, uh, south the south that are waiting patiently, is the fact that if. You know, this man enters, just like what happened in Edo. You know, he might likely want to take eight years. So, and that will push them further down the ladder. So it will be, it will be better for them to support the one that has four years. And then thereafter, it will come to their turn. And so it is this still turn by turn. And you, you see also the development and infrastructure will play a second fiddle. You know, to turn by turn. turn. We need to change that, that mentality. All you right. Know. Let, let's uh, see what we can do with the Guardian newspaper. There is a story on uh, Ondo as well. History repeats itself. Akere Dolu wins in divided Ondo South Central. Uh, that's uh, the story um, on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Before I go on to take on the big screamer there, I, I want to ask, um, ask you about the margin of um, a win. Uh, the, the total number of people who voted and the total number of people who are actually um, supposed to vote. I think it's over a million. Yeah, one point eight barely, million. Yes, barely six hundred thousand voted in the current. Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I have said it that our um, uh, uh, population, our voting population, has been, you know, even though you say a lot of people, there's no, you know, massive turnout because of, you know, certain indices. People are disenfranchised. A lot of people are disenchanted. 
Some people also do not have faith in the system, and so they're like, why bother? A winner has already emerged in a process that had not even begun, so why bother? But apart from all of that, our electoral process is still overrated. Our voting population is still overrated. If you remember, when Jega came in 2011, 2010, 2011, he tried to clean up the register, you know, introduce automated fingerprint identification system. The numbers, the humongous numbers reduced, and the governors complained. Oh, you are reducing, you know, the figures in my state. Why you are increasing the figures in your own areas? You know. So at the end of the day, that process, you know, we heard nothing about it again. And but because you have, with the introduction of card readers, the numbers dropped drastically. Unlike those days, you hear that everybody that registered, all of them voted and they voted for a particular political party. But now, because you have to identify that you're truly the one with the PVC. And in some cases, you know, if, when it fails, there's a device called Zipa to complement, you know, to determine the card you're holding belongs to INEC. You see the numbers reducing. Edo, it was less than 40% of the voting population. The same thing with Ondo, less than four. The highest we've seen so far, it's about 30-something percent, you know, voting. Well, well, and, at least we are making some headway. Yeah, that's why you hear there's massive turnout. Yeah. But when you look at this turnout, you know, with the figures, figures on the register, it doesn't, it, is it, doesn't, it is, doesn't tally. It is worrying. But with improvement, with subsequent improvement, people will have faith in the process. With uh, less militarization and then with uh, transparency in the process, people, uh, there will be less acrimony, there will be less fights, and people will have, you know, hope to come out and, you know, cast their, their ballot. With that, maybe we might see a little increase in the numbers, but not that you have 1.8 million voters and then you're going to have about 1.7 million like we used to have known. All right, we'll come back to you in a bit on some of the headlines on the Guardian newspaper, but just a quick update uh, for our viewers. Uh, the situation um, in Lekki is sustained. We have more footage uh, from the agitation there. Uh, young people insisting that they want more from the government and not just a blanket ban uh, that has been done repeatedly on the same matter. Uh, you can see people peacefully. I think this is probably uh, from another location. Um, I'm, I'm not... This is today, this morning. I will bring you the pictures as they come. Okay, it's still lucky. The protest in Lekki, these are the young people all requesting uh, for some change. Uh, we'll be showing you the visuals as they come. Uh, stay with us under breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Uh, let's come back to our studio guest. Uh, the Guardian newspaper uh, still has, uh, still on the matter of SARS, uh, for which we've just showed you uh, visuals. Ethnic fault lines show as IGP dissolves SARS. Uh, that's the one on the front page of the Guardian. Yes, and there is uh, two riders, you can uh, see them. IGP bows to pressure, not South disagree. Wizkid, that's the entertainer, leads London jubilation. Disbandment Cosmetics says Huriwa. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw a poster of, um, you know, some youth from Casina, you know. Arewa uh, youth. Uh, 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 no, not Arewa youth now. I think some youth from Casina, Casina youth. Uh, support SAS and support the IG. I, and I'm like, this is not, we shouldn't introduce ethnicity into this. This is not about the fact that, you know, um, and that's why I said earlier on on the program that we should also not um, politicize it. This call for the uh, sacking of IG. Some people would see him as, oh, there, you want to use this opportunity to remove one of us and maybe bring theirs. You know, and then this also should not be seen from the prison of ethnicity. It's about deaths of Nigerian youth. As we speak now, people are dying even in that casino state. Bandits are killing people. And I also, I, I can tell you that there are some people also who have faced police harassment, you know, in this same state. So it's not about the IG. Nobody should, the, the, those people should not reduce it to the IG. It's not about, oh, because it's the IG today, so let's support SARS, even though we do not agree with what they are doing. For, if you look at, apart from the hashtag trending, but if you look at the demands, it all, all points to a reformation of the Nigerian police. And I don't think anybody should sit down, or anybody in his right senses, or anybody truly 
would sit down and say they do not want a reformation of the Nigerian police as presently constituted. And so, the, and just to this, be a clog on the wheel, there was a group that protested in support yes, that's what of I'm SARS. Yes, I saw posters. Men and women. Men and women. A man was yeah. not I a I am telling you that that protest, I can tell you that that protest, you know, those protesters were probably compromised just to show that, look, it's not everybody that wants uh, this uh, end to SARS. But I, even those people, if you take your camera and your microphone and go in uh, uh, amongst them to ask them, they will tell you that some of them don't even know what they are protesting for. And some of them, if you also ask them truly, they will tell you that truly they want a reformed Nigerian police. And so why are you protesting that you want SARS when right. you want a reformation of Nigerian police? And uh, that's the message. I, I think we'll just move on to the next paper because yeah. some of the headlines here have already been touched on. Um, well, uh, moving on to papers. the Punch News uh, next. Let's see what we can also quickly find over here. APC praises peace moves for Akira Dulu's re-election. Um, it also says here, end SARS campaigners uh, demand executive order disbanding the squad. IG Sachs unit, uh, police pledge new arrangement against violent crimes. Also, a Papa Greedlock maritime workers issue 21-day ultimatum threaten strike. Um, a few others um, also on the uh, punch newspapers. NCC prosecutes seven for SIM card offenses. Court summons Odwa's GMD and others for contempt. Seven killed and ten rescued as Lagos building under construction collapses. Oluo's uh, vehicle stolen in the Lagos Hotel, says um, his aide. And of course, uh, Asarok budgets, uh, uh, what's this now? 10.2 billion naira for electrical uh, maintenance and renovation. Federal government and labor resume electricity and petrol price hike uh, talks. I think there's also somewhere there that uh, uh, hike um, uh, suspension has been has expired, so we probably would be going back to you know the high prices for electricity. Uh, please permit me to start with your Papa Gridlock, you know, um, at the top of the newspaper. Over for three consecutive weeks now on, on the program, The Advocate, that runs on this station, I've been talking about the states of roads in Lagos, the states of roads in Nigeria, and I even pointed to alternative. I had them... Um, you know, an exchange with Lagos State Police, uh, Lagos State Commissioner for Information, and I pointed them to the fact that they need to dredge also the waters to create alternative because some of these heavy vehicles, you know, put pressure on the road. Now, on your way to Apapa, you see trucks parked on the bridge, and the bridge are not built as car parks for trucks. If care is not taken, ten years from now, because of this pressure, those build bridge, if not properly cared for, might collapse. And so, there are a lot of people, you, you people are lucky, you're on the island, and, and so, yeah, you see renovations of road in, on the island, but go to most areas on the mainland, the roads are bad. I do not think that Nigerian government should still be waiting for dry seasons to construct roads. There should be plan. The lagos Badagri Expressway, it's, it's terrible. A papa a, a road, the road to Apapa had been under construction for as long as I can remember, right from Fashola's time. And, and so, government should do something. The federal government should also intervene. They should understand that Lagos occupy a special status. And so, Lagos should be given that special status, dredge the waters, make use of water transportation. It will ease the burden on the road also. So, when you do all of this, it becomes easy. There is nowhere, no not south east west nowhere in nigeria that you can boast of two good trunk a roads two good trunk a road and so it, I, I think this with this answers that's why i say government should be swift in addressing it because before you know it people might come out to protest for end bad governance you know so and then you move to um i also uh, the apc praises peace move for Akere Dolu's election. You know, before the election, they were able to reconcile some of the warring parties, you know, and then, then they pledged their support for Akere Dolu. But a peace move should not just be for elections. They should take it beyond the election, now that the elections are over. And, you know, and then um, oh, Olu's vehicle stole it. I, I think we should just move on to the nation where we're out of time. But since you've already mentioned it, go ahead and... Olu's uh, vehicle stole it in Lagos Hotel. Yes, um, gradually now we're beginning to hear of, you know, car theft again in Lagos. Before it was a phone theft, the car te theft gradually reduced. 
and let it not creep back. Most yeah. especially now that you have NSAS and then, you know, you're having Kijak so that, you, you know, I, I, I think this um, issues so that people don't see it as, you know, an attempt to um, twist the people. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um Legal practitioner Libora Soshoma for joining us uh, on Off the Press. Uh, but we're not done yet. I'll just quickly uh, take a look at the headlines on the Nation newspaper. Uh, Sack of SARS gets a wide acclaim. We've been talking about it all morning. Uh, I don't know if there is any possible angle we can take it from. Uh, but we're sure developments will be coming on as we go. And we will treat them here on Plus TV Africa. New electricity tariff suspension extended. That's another good one. Um, investors await third quarter results. That's uh, a bit of business uh, for you. The kidnapping Kaduna is captured also on the front page. The Lagos building collapse also on the front page. Akere Dolu's victory uh, dance is captured on the front page of the paper. That's what we're going to do. Just wrap things up for now.